Hello students, Ms. Swanson here, and today we're going to learn about matter. Now everything that we can see in our lives is made of matter, including all of the stars in the universe, which is why I chose this picture here. So by the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe the components of matter, provide examples, and classify examples of the components of matter. So let's take a look at matter itself. Matter is everything that has mass and has volume and it can be split into two parts. Those that are pure substances and those that are mixtures. Now our pure substances have constant composition, which means if you took a sample of that pure substance from, for example, in that um, canister of, of orange circles, if you took a sample at any place, you would end up with orange circles. So all the time it's going to be orange circles. For the mixture, there's variable composition. If you took a sample in that second canister in various places, sometimes you would get orange circles, sometimes you would get red circles, sometimes you would get purple circles. So it's made up of different things mixed together. It's not constant. Now if we split up our mixtures, they can be split into two types. Homogeneous mixtures, which are also called solutions, or heterogeneous mixtures, which are also called mechanical mixtures. Now we'll start off with the mechanical mixtures. Here you can see all the different parts. So for example, if you've ever tried pouring oil in water, you can actually see globs of oil floating around in the water until it settles into two distinct sections. And even then you can specifically see the oil and you can specifically see the water. So they don't mix together ever to make one compound or one specific thing that you can see. You can always see separate parts. So here's some examples of heterogeneous mixtures. Fruit salad, you can see all the different pieces of fruit. Uh, oil, water, and it looks like sand. You can see three distinct layers. And then we've got, looks like oil and some type of sugar compound or some, um, I don't know, some sort of organic compound in the bottom of that graduated cylinder. And you can see the water. Uh, when, with the zoom in, you can see the original water molecules. And then with the other compounds at the bottom, you can see those molecules, but the two are not mixing together. Now if we look at our homogeneous mixtures or solutions, here all the parts look the same. So if you took, for example, a spoonful of sugar and mixed it up in a glass of water, if, as long as you didn't put too much sugar in there, as long as you just put one spoonful, everywhere would just sort of look like water. You wouldn't be able to see the little specks of sugar in there. So here are some examples of homogeneous mixtures, uh, something like Kool-Aid or any of those sorts of drink mixes. Uh, there's some different glassware that have different color, it looks like food coloring and water mixed in there. Or if we have a beaker, what looks like it's got several different types of ions, but they're all mixed together in there and you can't see them uh, from the zoomed out version, you can't see them. Only when you zoom in can you see the individual parts, which means it's a homogeneous mixture. Now let's take a look at our pure substances. These can also be split into two elements and compounds. Now elements have only a single type of atom, so this is something you could find on the periodic table, like neon for example. So here we have our periodic table. Any one of these is an element, and in fact they have, uh, there are some people that make these collections of periodic tables that actually have in little boxes the actual elements except for maybe the radioactive ones. So here's a picture of someone who's actually collecting those, uh, those elements and those would be considered elements, they're not mixtures. And then finally, pure substances can also be split into compounds. Compounds have two or more atoms uh, combined in a constant ratio. Now what we mean by that is carbon dioxide always has one carbon and two oxygen. So if you mix one carbon and two oxygens together, it makes carbon dioxide. There's only one carbon and one oxygen, that's carbon monoxide, and that's a different compound. But as long as it has the same number of elements in the same ratio, you're going to end up with a compound. And here are some examples of compounds, some simple ones at the top, and then some more complex ones, so sugar and uh, DNA molecule at the bottom. 
Here's another way to look at our different classifications of matter. We have our elements, which are just individual colored balls all by themselves. The compounds, which have several different colored balls attached together. Homogeneous mixture, where the different colors of balls are all sort of combined together. And then the heterogeneous mixture, where there's two distinct phases of these different compounds. So let's take another look at our learning goals. You should be able to describe the components of matter, and you should be able to provide examples and classify examples of the components of matter. If you can do this, fantastic. If not, please rewatch the video, and if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. All right, that's all for now. Bye-bye.